Hello, it's James here. Have you often thought that radio control servos on a radio control system or controlled by an Arduino aren't strong enough? Wouldn't it be really good to use a big old motor as a servo, like a windscreen wiper motor or another DC motor? Well, I'm going to show you how. But first of all, what on earth am I talking about? So here's a typical RC setup. I've got my transmitter, I've got my receiver, I've got some servos plugged in, I've got a battery eliminator circuit, and that's actually providing 6 volts to everything, it's plugged into this LiPo. In the olden days we used to use 4 AA batteries in a battery box to give us 6 volts and that power all the servos. So I've got these two servos here and you'll notice as I move the sticks that this servo actually tracks the position of the stick and this one's linked to this channel so it moves in the other way. So obviously it actually tracks my position, unlike a motor which would just go round and round. So you'll notice that these servo wires have three wires in them. So that one is just the power, that's just black and red, so that's our 0 and 6 volts. The others have got 0 and 6 volts and an additional wire which is yellow and a kind of orangey colour on that one. And that is a PWM signal which drives the servo position. And that PWM is basically turning on and off really quickly, and depending on how long the on space is, that will tell us the position of the servo and the servo will track that position. So if you have a quick look on Google Images for servo PWM, there's a lot of similar diagrams to this and we can see that basically there's some pulses occurring and these occur roughly every 20 milliseconds. So every 20 thousandths of a second and generally they range in length, the pulse on the up cycle here between one and two milliseconds. And that'll make the servo do a 180 and obviously at one and a half milliseconds, which is also 1500 microseconds, uh, that will put the servo in the mid position. So in order to control a motor from that signal, we're going to have to read that timing very accurately. So I've linked up an Arduino to the radio control receiver. We've got 5 volts and ground and we're powering the whole thing from the USB here. So that's good enough 5 volts to power the receiver. And we've got one extra wire which is plugged into one channel's PWM output. That's going into pin 8 of the Arduino. Obviously I've got the transmitter on there and I've written some simple Arduino code. Now this isn't an ideal way to do it and I'm going to show you why and then I'm going to show you a better way. So uh, basically all I've done is declared a variable there for the PWM. In our setup we've declared pin 8 as input. I've started up the serial terminal so I can monitor the results and our loop is very simple. We're using this command pulse in to read from the uh, pin 8, basically to read that PWM to try and read those pulse lengths. And then I'm printing that out to the serial terminal. So we have a look at the serial terminal here. We can see that um, we should have some numbers and as I move the stick we can see those numbers change and we get basically the... Uh, nearly a thousand to nearly two thousand, which of course is uh, one millisecond to two milliseconds. We're measuring microseconds here, and, and that looks pretty good. And if you were doing something very simple, like you wanted to know what, what roughly what position the stick was in, um, then that would be well and good. But um, you can, as you can see there, if I leave the stick stationary, these numbers are quite jittery. And we can see that even better if we look at the serial plotter. So we can see that actually that's really spiky and nasty, and there's all sorts of... Uh, jumps and awful things in there and um, obviously if I were to move the stick to its full range I mean that looks pretty good but as soon as we let the thing go off the end I mean you can see there's noise on here so we're not doing that timing very accurately. But why are the results so inaccurate? So our average Arduino board's more than quick enough to read those pulses. What's actually happening is as the code loop is going round and round at some point it comes across the pulse in command it starts reading the pulse but that may not be at the exact time that the pulse occurs and that's because those pulses are quite quick. If there were more code in the loop, it'd be even worse as well. And then basically the time that the pulse in command happens could be quite arbitrary, depending on if there's other stuff that takes a variable time in the code loop. Our loop's really simple, so anything it's doing is writing out to the serial port, but it could be much worse than that. So what we really need to do is start that timing at the right time. And to do that, we need a thing called interrupt that actually monitors a pin, and when it sees the pulse, it stops everything else, interrupts that code, and starts the timing. So here's our second piece of code, and this one's a bit more complicated. I have put the code up on GitHub, the link's in the description, so don't forget to check that out if you don't want to have to read it off the screen and write it. And all the code for this episode will also be there as well. Uh, so what I'm basically doing here is, um, the first thing to, to look at here is we've got this previous millis and an interval. We're running our main loop as if it's a multitasking code. So basically everything in this loop will run every 20 milliseconds. It checks that interval if it's expired, it runs the loop, otherwise it doesn't. And that means we don't have to run everything at full belt. We've got other code to put in here in the future, in this episode, so basically it's quite important that we only run every 20 milliseconds or some other time that we define. Now what we're doing here is using pin 2 and that's an interrupt pin and I've attached an interrupt to it, that is interrupt 0 and pin 3 on the Uno is interrupt 1. I'm running a function called time it whenever that pin changes state and that's what this says here. 
So our function called time it basically says if that pin is high, then start the clock and bookmark that time. And if it's not, so it's low, then stop the clock and work out the difference between when you started the clock. It also sets a flag to true and done is a boolean uh, variable, which is up here. So uh, in the actual main code, all we're doing every 20 milliseconds is checking if the flag is set um, and sending it back if it is. And obviously the interrupt will run independently. We don't have to call that function because it's attached to the interrupt. And then basically prints out the value, sets the flag back to false and the whole thing runs again. So now if we open the serial monitor, we can see hopefully that those numbers are a lot more stable. There's a little bit of digit um, jitter on that last digit, but essentially that's a much more stable value. And if we move the stick there we can see that we get pretty much the same results all the way through and that gives us a much more stable value for that pwm so now we can read the signal reliably we need to drive the motor to the right position so let's have a look at what's in a wiper motor and what's in an rc servo so here's the wiper motor it's basically an electric motor with a worm gear that turns this output shaft on the back there's three wires that come out of the actual motor and they go into a thing here and this counts one revolution so when you do intermediate wipe it will rotate exactly around once and stop and your wipers always stop at the bottom so we need to cut that off we need to cut the wires and connect to two of them now you can connect to any two of them but depending on what combination you get you'll get a different speed out of the motor because it's got basically several windings in there. And that's how different speed wiper modes work. So of course an RC servo is completely different to that. It's a motor with a gearbox, but instead of having that sort of counting one revolution piece of electronics for wipers, it's actually got a potentiometer inside that looks a bit like that, but very much smaller. And that means as the output turns, it turns the potentiometer. And that means it can measure its position and it can match it to the desired position that we get from the PWM. Now it also has some electronics inside which mean that basically it's driving the motor to that position. So it's actually just receiving that PWM signal down the cable and working out all that position and driving the motor in the right direction. And all of that's handled internally. So what we need to do is basically take that PWM signal into our wiper motor. We're gonna use an Arduino inter to interpret the signal, a motor driver, a separate pot attached to the motor and basically build a servo with all the electronics. All right, so I've mounted my wiper motor in a 3D printed holder and I've put a 3D printed output thing on there. So normally these wiper motors have about an M5 on there, which attaches the two halves together. So I've just taken that out and put a longer bolt through that goes through my uh, piece of plastic. So I'll put all this CAD up on GitHub as well. It's all open source. You can use it or modify it or do what you want with it. So I've got this um, output shaft on here, which has got a pulley and it's got a lever. It's only plastic. You probably might want to make something out of metal if you're actually going to convey force with one of these. Obviously, if I put power on my motor now, around it goes. And I've connected to the red and the blue wire, not the black wire, and that's the, the pair of wires that make it go the fastest. So now I need to get a pot attached to this output. So what I've decided to do is make this thing, which is another pot with a pulley, and that'll sit just like that. And we can just tie a string between them. So when the output shaft turns, this turns. Now this is a 180 degree pot. So it only goes around 180 degrees and then it stops. You can also get these, which are 10 turn pots, which go round, round and round and round and round 10 times. So you could actually make a motor that goes round and position itself multiple turns if you use the pot that turned further. So I've now tied my string on between the pots. So the pot moves when the motor output moves and I've wired the pot in with three wires. And one of those goes to five volts, one to ground, and the middle one goes to the analog in of an Arduino. So those are the wires along this edge here. As I said, five volts ground and analog in, which is the middle pin. And that will give us an analog voltage so that we can measure the position of that pot. We've still got our radio control PWM and its own five volts coming in here. And on the other side, we've got a motor driver. So that again is wired to ground and I've wired it to two PWM pins, which are pins five and six. That extra ground pin and the two PWM pins come to the ground and the in one and in two of this, which is an IBT4 motor driver. Now these are about 20 amps and fairly common on eBay. The, the wiper motor you'll find the stall current is about seven amps at 12 volts. So this should have enough current handling for that motor and any motor driver you use should be rated at really more than 10 amps. As I say, this one is 20 and you could get the BTS 7960, which is about 40. So there's our whole setup. Of course, the motor wires go to the output of that motor driver and the battery goes to the input there, which will eventually go off to the battery. I'm powering the Arduino and the radio control receiver from the USB still on the Arduino, but we don't need to leave it connected to a computer. We could just go back to that battery eliminator circuit, plug that right into here, 
five volts will feed all the way through and we could power this off the battery that powers the motor and that will make it self-contained once we've put the code on. So our code's a little bit more complicated now. We've introduced something called PID or PID controller with an Arduino library. The link is right here and that has three variables, P, I and D. And if you want to find out more about PID, you can read about it on Wikipedia. There's quite a lot of information. But essentially, it's three tuning parameters that allow us to tune how that motor responds. P is the overall gain, so essentially how fast it's going to go. If it's too high, it'll overshoot and it'll sit there oscillating, never hitting its target. The other two help tune that up. So I'm leaving those for zero for now, but just to give you a rough idea of what they do, I will basically help it accelerate towards its target more. So if I were building a balancing robot that balanced on one or two wheels, I'd need quite a high I value so it could compensate quick enough to balance but I will also make it more sloppy so it will allow it to overshoot and you then need to tighten that up with D which makes things a bit sharper. So for motor control generally I find P on its own is okay or P and a little bit of D but as it is a P value of 1 will do you can experiment with turning those up. So we've declared the variables here as well, done our PID setup which is all part of the library to create our PID1 object and we've also gone down here and done the PID setup in the setup function uh, which says that basically the sample time is 20 milliseconds, which if you remember is the interval time we set for our multitasking code to run. And we said the output is between minus 255 and plus 255. And that is the maximum value that you can have at least 255. 0 to 255 is the most you can have with the PWM output of the Arduino that's going to drive the motor. So we've still got our time it function and that's all very well and good but here I'm reading the pot as an analog in and I'm writing this out to the serial terminal as well as well as the PWM from the transmitter. So if we have a look at the serial terminal you can see as I move the stick here um, that number in the middle is changing which is the PWM. The one on the left hand column is the pot and that's about in the middle so it's about 549 it ranges from 0 to 1023. So uh, what we've got in the PID loop is a setup, a set point, an input, and then we do a compute and that gives us an output. So the set point is the position we want to achieve, so that's the PWM that's being read from the transmitter, and we're scaling that from the value we get on that, which is 1000 to 2000, and we're scaling that to minus 255 to 255. And 255 is the maximum value we can put into the PWM pins of the Arduino, so we're scaling everything around zero, with a maximum of 255. Again, we've done that with the pot there, which is measuring the position of the motor. We then do a PID compute, and that gives us the output, which is in the right-hand column. So you can see as I move the stick, that gives us an analog output, it varies, and that's so it doesn't overshoot as it achieves its target, it's proportional as I move the stick there. And what would be happening is the motor would be running and the left-hand column would be changing as well, so that PID value will be closing on zero. After that, we need to write it out to the PWM pins. So um, here I've got if the output's more than zero, then do an analog write. So it's writing the value to one of the PWM pins and writing the other one as zero. And that will drive the motor in one direction. If it's less than zero, it does it the other way around. The only extra thing I've had to do here is use the abs function to turn that value positive because it's probably a negative value and we can't write that out to the PWM pin as it is. So I've now got my battery connected to the motor driver, so the motor's got power. And if I move my stick backwards and forwards, we should be to see that the output of that wiper motor tracks really well. So what's actually happening is our set point on the PID controller is this stick, or the PWM being uh, read by the receiver there into the Arduino. The input is our pot, and then basically the PID controller is trying to match the two and give us an output to move this to match the demand and that seems to be working pretty well. Of course, if we put a load on here, we might need to tune that PID driver separately, and um, we might need some D, or we might need some more gain, and that'll be perfectly good, and that's a really good reason why this is a good way to make servos, because you have all that control. And normally with a radio control servo, you don't get the option to uh, vary those PID parameters unless you get really expensive digital servos or something. And of course the value is proportional as well, so if there's a big gap, the motor goes faster and then it should decelerate as the value gets smaller so that it doesn't overshoot. And that's the really good thing about being able to tune this up. So I hope that's been useful. The only one thing to watch for, of course, is if the motor turns the wrong way, it'll never achieve the position on the pot and it'll just keep turning and turning and break the string. So all you need to do is swap around the motor wires or the two outside wires on the pot and that'll mean that it'll catch up the right way round. 
So I'm going to put all the CAD and the code on GitHub. Link is in the description for this video. If you like it, then like the video. It's also really important to say that these projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards, including a live stream with me and all my videos early. All right, that's all for now.